But I see most people, when the problem hits, that's when they hide. Do you know that we're all going through recovery and discovery at the same time? Most people don't know how to do both at once. Either they're all in the recovery or all in the discovery. But I'm here to tell you right now, life is recovery and discovery at the same time. If you can learn to master your recovery while mastering your discovery at the same time, you will be unstoppable. In fact, while you pay attention to your discovery, many times you are getting healed in the recovery zone just by being around other people's energy. Brilliant people like yourself who do amazing things. They are masters at untying knots. In the 1930s, a man by the name of Walt Disney walked into an amusement park. And he said, someday, I'm gonna build my own amusement park. But mine's gonna be different, better, and more magical. In the mid-1950s, Disneyland appeared in Anaheim, California. What was once a lot of orange groves became Disneyland, and it was different, better, and more magical. I've now been to 77 countries of the world, and every time I go to countries, I ask to speak at the orphanages because I love little kids, and I also love little kids that are in a setback. And one day I was speaking in South Africa in the townships, and I was speaking to children that were six, seven, and eight years of age, and I said, what do you want to be when you get older? And one little girl said, Beyonce. And another little kid said, I'm gonna be a king. <laughs> and it's amazing that they lived in these shacks but they were thinking different, better, more magical. Not one of them said, I want to be divorced seven times. <laughs> Not one of them said, I want to be bankrupt. Because in us, which I believe is innate, is different, better, and more magical. I want you to try that. Say different, better, more magical. The word magical, I've been studying for about 14 years to work on this book that I came out with last year called The Miracle Mentality that's doing amazingly well. Thank you for that. The word magical, as you know, means extraordinary. It means unusual. It means uncommon. But when I look at the culture today around the world, it seems like so many people are bent on being common, on being regular, on being normal, and just surviving. But I believe this with all my heart. You've been born an original, why die a copy? That was good, right? So I don't want you to be anybody else but your amazing dynamic, magical self. If you like that so far, go ahead and clap real loud like you just want to be your amazing, dynamic self, right? So when I was a little kid in Compton, California, the home of Dr. Dre, Venus and Serena, my boy Kendrick Lamar, all of us are from Compton, and as it says in the video, we had seven people in a two-bedroom apartment. That's called cramped <laughs> and very crowded. And um, we had an old Volkswagen bug, not even the van. We had the bug. So we had seven people driving around in the, in the bug. That's called illegal. My mother, Vesentita Gonzalez, she's Spanish. My father is black from Cuba. My mother never told us about get good grades so you can go to Harvard or Yale. She said things like, don't get anybody pregnant. I'm like, I'm 12. <laughs> don't, don't end up like your cousin Carlos. I'm like, what? 
So a, a lot of my childhood was like avoiding more pain because I was birthed in pain, people. Um, one day my father went to go get food for uh, my mother. She was hungry and they didn't have like DoorDash or Uber Eats and he went to go get food and he never came back because he went through a green light. A man ran a red light, hit him and killed him instantly. And so now my father, who worked at a place called Bethlehem Steel for a very low wage, we were already lower income enough. He now has passed. And man, that was not good. Because we didn't know how to handle a crisis. We didn't know how to handle a setback. We were already in survival mode. And I'll never forget that my mother would cry, and I'd never heard my mother cry in my life before. And now she thought we could not hear, but she was hiding in the room, and she was crying. I, was tell, I would tell my brother Randy, who was four years older than me, I go, gosh, we got we to gotta stop her from crying. Like, how long do you think she'll cry? He goes, I don't know. So we, we were all at a loss with this new challenge that we were facing, but already we were, we were in a bad spot, but now it got worse. And I remember my older sister, she decided to get married faster than I think she was going to get married. My second sister, she was just always gone at her friend's house. And my third sister, she was always gone at the friend's house. And then my brother just was smoking weed all the time, and so he was somewhere else. So it was me, 10-year-old little Timmy, and the crying mother. And that was not good, people. At that time, I never thought that I'd come to Mind Valley in Estonia and talk to brilliant people. <laughs> At that time, I never thought that I'd get to live this magical life that life is allowing me to live. At that time, I just felt like another person that got hit by life and ended up in a difficult place. I've been saying for years that if you don't do something with life, life will do something with you. I want you to try that. Say, if I do not do something with life, life will do something with me. But in the sixth grade, a white guy by the name of Mr. Probert was about to be used in a divine way. He knew, obviously, that my father had just died. He was my teacher. He says, Timmy, can you wait after class? And the whole class went, ooh, like he's in trouble. And he says, Timmy, I want you to wait after class because I have these three books, and I want to see if you want to read one of them. If you want to read one of these books, because I really think it can help your life. He says, it's not for extra credit, it's just because it's, I want you to read these books. And so I was looking at the books, I was trying to figure this out, what, what this whole situation was about. He says, Timmy, I think you are, and as it said in the video, I didn't know what he was gonna say, a good dancer, a good, good basketball player, but he says, I think you are brilliant. People look at me, I'd never heard those words in my entire life. My mother, with her very broken English, first language Spanish, had never said, you are brilliant. This, this white teacher branded me brilliant. But I want you to really hear me, because when, when he said that, I did not push the words away. I took them out of the air, and I stuck them on myself. He just branded me brilliant. He said, which one of the three books would you like? And I would recognized this stuff. Uh, Name Michelangelo, the book about Michelangelo. Why would that be important? You'll find out later in the story. This was a divine move, man. I read this book about the life of Michelangelo, about how he was a guy like me. He'd been through trials, had been through tests, been through stuff, and still did amazing things. And I was very inspired as a, as a person in the sixth grade. What I have found in all of our lives is that most of us start with something called momentum. 
If you're taking notes, write down the word momentum. Momentum is a force. It's a surge. It's an energy. Somebody say, I have momentum. Say it even stronger. Say, I have momentum. Do you remember when you were a kid, did anybody have momentum at all? Momentum is the shout, the energy. Most teachers do not walk into a kid's class when they're very little and say, kids, pump up the volume. No. <laughs> they're like, shh, because you have too much momentum. You, your relatives are here. Shh, quiet down. You have too much momentum. One of my best friends in the world is a lady named Oprah Winfrey. We've been doing projects together for so many years, and we hang out. You know what it's like when you hang out at Oprah's house. And she says, Tim, the thing I love about you, that one statement when you say that life, watch, will knock the shout out of you. Hey. Have you ever had the shout and then life knocks the shout out of you? You're doing well and then you get a breakup, the life knocks the shout out of you. You're doing well and you find out you're ill, life knocks the shout out of you. But when you're little, we start with this momentum. We start with, watch, a shout. But it's amazing to me as I've researched all these years, you find people even in their teens where all of a sudden the shout goes to a whisper. In their 20s, the shout goes to a whisper. In the 30s, the, the, the shout goes to a whisper. In their 40s, the shout goes to a whisper. It's like, how's your husband? Watch. He's okay. How are your children? They're okay. How, 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 how's your life going? It's okay. But I believe that we can get our shout back. I said, I believe that we can get our shout back. Clap your hands if you believe. Come on. Come on. In 1999, a friend of mine that you would know, certain people that I'll mention, they allow me to mention them in, their, in these talks. And some people, they're my buddies. Just talked to this guy yesterday, but they don't like to be mentioned. But this guy you would know, he's a famous guy. He brought me a guy. I was on Sunset Boulevard, and I've been life coaching entertainers since 1989, starting with older cats like uh, James Kahn, who we just lost, Elliot Gould. Started working with Charlton Heston when I was just in my 20s, Lee Iacocca. And uh, so I have the skill set to work with people. And so my friend, who you would know, brought me this guy, and the guy sat down, and he started telling me about his challenges, and the gentleman's name who was telling me about his challenges is Robert Downey Jr. Now, Robert Downey Jr. in 1999 was kind of going into a spiral, but we all knew about it. And he would later talk about it, struggling with addiction. And so I remember Robert said to me, Tim, you helped this guy, that guy, that guy, and he named a bunch of his celebrity friends. He said, I want you to do me a favor. Just help me to be okay. And I said, that's going to be a problem. I said, because I don't really believe in okay. I really don't. How's Mind Valley? Oh my God, it's so okay. <laughs> Did you love the parties? Oh my God, they've been so amazing. I thought they were just okay. <laughs> what about the amazing summer weather that we're having right now in Talent? I just think it's okay. So I don't really do okay. So when Robert said, just help me to be okay, I don't blame him for thinking that way because when you have had the shout knocked out of you, pay attention, you just want to be okay. If you've had COVID, you just want to be able to walk from the, from, the, from the bed to the toilet. Are you with me? If you've been to a terrible breakup, you just want to see the sun shine again. But I said, Robert, I, I, I'm not really good at, at okay. And then he said, all right, 
work your magic. That's what he said. I'll never forget. He goes, work your magic. Thank you very much. Let me do my job. See, I believe that we start with this thing called momentum, and then you have what I call life interruptions. A life interruption could be you were molested as a child. A life interruption could be your parents got divorced. A life interruption was you found out you had lupus. You, you found out you had a rare disease. A, a life interruption could be you were in a, some kind of an accident and, and something happened even in childhood. This is what we see in a lot of people's lives that I work with is that they were doing very well and then somehow, some way, some life interruption hit. Every single person that's sitting here right now, you have had life interruptions that you sometimes do not tell us about. A life interruption. So as I described, mine was my father passing. How do you cope when you're 10 with your father passing? How do you cope with that when my mother, Vesentita, who is very beautiful and warm now at 91, walks strong, sees strong, cusses strong, prays strong? Typical Latin lady. But when I was a kid, she never hugged us. My mother never hugged me until she was 71 years of age. And so all that that was taking place with my father dying, who was the happy guy in the family, and now this life interruption hits. If you're not careful, look, you'll start to go into a place of compromise, and you're not thinking different, better, more magical. You're just thinking survival. But as I've been talking around the world, you were made for magic. And magic was made for you. Somebody needs your magical life. Somebody needs you to soar. Somebody needs you to be brilliant. Somebody needs you to be fantastic. Somebody clap your hands if you hear what I'm saying today. Somebody needs your magic. Come on now. I was in Turkey the other day and uh, in the Istanbul airport, which I think they did a great job with the new one. I was walking and a lady chased me down. She goes, Tim Story, I don't mean to scare you. I said, okay. She was a flight attendant. And she says, I effing love you. Oh my God, you changed my life. You changed my life. She, and she told me what TV show she saw me in. She said, I, I watched it on YouTube like seven times. She goes, can I give you a hug? And when she hugged me, she just started weeping. She said, you helped me get my magic back. You helped me get my magic back. So in the case of Robert, we... We knew we were going to get him out of okay, but we didn't know we were going to make him Iron Man. So I was driving with my buddy, a friend of maybe yours too, Michael Mina, who owns all the restaurants. And Robert, myself, Michael Mina, a couple other people, we were all eating on Sunset Boulevard. And we rolled out not so long ago. We were going down Sunset Boulevard to Michael Mina's restaurant. And uh, they had just put up this big mural on the side of one of the buildings in, on Sunset. I think it goes probably like at least four stories high. And it was for one of Robert's last movies on Iron Man. And I told Mina, I said, man, I just got to pull over. And I pulled over and I got emotional. Because one minute you could be so dead, you look like you're finished. One minute you look so dead that the media says they're finished. But I'm here to say it's never over till God says it's over. I said it's never over until it's really over. How many of you know it's not over for you? You're about to rise one more time in every area of your life. Clap your hands. Come on, Mind Valley. Man, I love this crowd. We didn't think he was going to be Iron Man. We didn't think that he was going to make $75 million a year. <laughs> People, pay attention. <laughs> so
So you have this momentum, and then you have a life interruption. I wonder what your life interruption was. Was it a learning disorder? Was it depression? Was it anxiety? Was it your brother committed suicide? Was it your sister committed suicide? Was it your father, your mother? Was it? This is the stuff I work with people on a daily basis. Not sometimes, daily basis. So I talk very real. So I don't know what your life interruption was when you were a child. You, you know. I don't know what it was like when you were a teenager. You know. I don't know what it was like in your early 20s. You know. I, I don't know what it's like now. I don't know what the life interruption is now. I know that we had this thing called a pandemic where we were all quarantined for a long time. To me, that was kind of a life interruption. But when we have a setback, I beg you to hear me. Most people sit in the setback. Sit, they sit, they sit in the setback, they sit in the setback. Look at me. Oh my God, what's going to happen now? What variant's going to hit? I don't know. Just hide. <laughs> when we have a setback, some people sit. Say sit. Some people settle. Say settle strong. How many know somebody that's a settler? Just lift your hands. They're, just, they're living in the land of okay. Could you be your whole family? That's why you don't like to go to Thanksgiving. You're like, oh my God, I have so much momentum. I don't even know if I want to go to Thanksgiving. <laughs> I, I, I'm doing so well. I, I don't even know if I want to go to Christmas. When most people have a setback, they sit in the setback, they sit in the setback, and they settle in the setback, and they then become, here comes the Tim storyline, they become a discount version of themselves. Man, you should write that. You become a discount version of yourself. Well, I used to be so awesome, and people used to love me. That was a while ago when I used to live in L.A. and West Hollywood. Bra, I used to like, man, anyway, yo, I was like, it was me and Vision and Vision's mom <laughs> started a company together. And then, you know, you know, man, bra, yeah, I used to. A lot of people sit in a setback, say it strong, say sit. A lot of people settle, say settle. I'm trying to tell you, most people you went to high school with, they are settling in some form of a setback. That's why if you go to the 10 year reunion, they better put a picture of the people on their jacket. Because you will not recognize people after 10 years. You're like, Tommy, is it you? There's Tommy. <laughs> some people sit, say sit. Some people settle, say settle. Here we go. Some people cement themselves in the setback. Cement, permanent, permanent. Dude, I used to really be like flowing, like Tim Story, life coach, the stars, great to meet you, yo. Anyway, you, man, if you knew what I've been through, it's common that comes at me. And then this happened, and then, and then that happened, and, 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 and that happened. See, I, I, I believe that the bigger the setback, the greater the comeback. I said the bigger the setback, the greater the comeback. Somebody here is about to have a comeback that is so huge and so magical. Clap your hands in Estonia. Come on, people. <laughs> Whatever doesn't kill you. When I was in the studio with Kanye West, I met Kanye in 2006, been flowing with him ever since. 
I was there when all he had was a beat. All he had was bum 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 bum. I said, "Yo, what are you gonna do with that?" He says, "Whatever, whatever, whatever, whatever does it, whatever doesn't, whatever doesn't, whatever doesn't, whatever doesn't kill me makes me stronger." I was in there for the entire song as Will I Am rolled in and said, "If I was you, yo, I'd change that." Then Pharrell Williams came in, said, "Hey, let's put Timberland on this. Timberland would be good." And the next thing, Pharrell said again, "Let's bring in Def Punk." Next thing, no, Def Punk gets flown in from. Paris, and they're doing this song, whatever doesn't kill me makes me look at all the hell we've all been through, and we are in Estonia in July, believing that life is still magical. You should go ahead and clap right there, even if your life is not perfect. Come on, Mind Valley. Come on, Mind Valley. <laughs> but I can hear some of you. You don't know what I've been through. You don't. You don't know. You don't know what she's been through. You don't. You don't know what he's been through. Look at. You don't know what he's been through. But we can't sit. We can't settle. Whew. can't cement myself, yo. I can't just start feeling sorry for myself when I'm 10 because my father died and we're Poe and we're from Compton. Why? Because somebody was waiting for me on the other side of my obedience to the plan for my life. I knew I was supposed to do something big, but I didn't know it was going to be this big. I'm here to tell you, some of your lives will be so great in 12 months, it's going to be weird. Your life is about to get so good, so magical, it's going to be weird. Clap your hands like it's a possibility. Come on, take me there like they do in every other city. Come on, Mind Valley. <laughs> Say, don't sit. Don't settle. Don't cement yourself. I know it's painful. I know it's hellish. I know it's, it's terrible. You know, my father dies, and two years later, my sister, who was so happy, she taught me art. She taught me to be creative. Her friend was driving in the fog and, and towards San Francisco, thought there was an off-ramp, was not, went down a cliff. Two girls live. My sister, the third girl, dies, hits her head, goes into a coma for eight days. People, people. I was in Hawaii one time. Who's ever been to Hawaii? It's nicer, right? I was in Hawaii working on my suntan. And I was body surfing at a place called Sandy Beach. And back in that day, they did not have this thing where you could like Google something. So I didn't know that Sandy Beach, some of you know it, man, the waves like bam, break right on the shore, bam. And my sister, who is a famous model, at the time, she's years older than me. I was like, I was, uh, I was like 12 years of age. I was 12 years of age. And I want you to picture this. Picture, you guys all have great imaginations. Think of me being skinny, real skinny. Think of me with a big afro like Michael Jackson. How many can see it? <laughs> so I'm body surfing by myself. I take the bus from my sister's apartment where she lived with two other models. And she let me stay there, the little brother, for three weeks because she was always trying to expose me and teach me and grow me because she knew I had potential. And so I take the bus to Sandy Beach. You got to hear this. And, and I go there and I, and, I, and I take off my Converse tennis shoes and I put everything in the sand. Then I go to body surf. Well, that particular day, the waves were super strong. And I was body surfing. All of a sudden, a wave hit and bam, and knocked me on the sand. And then I got back up and then bam, it knocked me in the sand. Then I got back up and it, bam, knocked me in the sand. And I couldn't believe these waves just kept hitting. That's how life is sometimes. Who's ever had it where like one wave hits, you're like, okay, time out. That was cool. <laughs> the idiot broke up with me. That was all right. I can handle this. Take a little break from social media. I'll be good. But then another wave hits. Watch. Who's ever had the waves just keep hitting? Come on. So the, 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 I'll never forget. It was the fifth wave that hit me, guys. All of a sudden, it knocked my swimsuit off. <laughs> True story. So little Michael, me, 
little skinny Timmy story with the big afro is naked in Sandy Beach, Hawaii. Now, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I got a dilemma. I can't, I can't walk back to get my stuff. <laughs> Luckily, like, like, I'm naked, people. So, thank goodness, I see my swimsuit floating. Look at me. Sometimes in life, you just see a glimpse of hope. Like some of you, you were struggling before Mind Valley. You're like, I'm going to Estonia. I'm going to Estonia. I'm going to get better. I'm going to Estonia. I'm going to get better. I saw the swimsuit, but as I was going after the swimsuit, I'm naked already. Life has already hit me. I'm going after the swimsuit, and bam, another wave hits. I'm like, son of a. <laughs> it's amazing how waves will keep coming even though you're knocked naked. But here's what I like to say. Sometimes you got to just fight. Sometimes you got to fight through. Somehow you got to make a way where there was a way. You better clap your hands like you're catching what I'm saying. Come on, come on, come on. Swimsuit. Swimsuit's there. I'm naked. Naked little Timmy. He'll someday speak in Estonia with clothes on. Look at me. I'm naked. I start to chase it. I start to chase it. Another wave hits. I grab it. I grab it. Look at me. The goal. I got it. Here I am clothed today. What's your point? What's your point? The waves will come. The adversity will come. You got the sight of a great life, the swimsuit. But sometimes you got to fight. You know what I like about you people? You never damn gave up. Look at everything you've been through. You never gave up. Clap your hands if you hear me. Come on, raise the roof of this place. Say this, say different, better, more magical. That's where I see you going. I get to be around the best people in the world, not just in one country. In the world, are you kidding me? The best scientists, the best artists, the best creators. No, the greatest. How many thank God for vision and what vision is all about? Give vision a big, big, big clap. How awesome is he? And his mother, thank you for having vision. He's brilliant. He's, he's, he, he's walking brilliance. Listen to this. But Walt Disney has this idea, different, better, more magical. Different, better, more magical. Different, better, more magical. That's what's innate. That's what's in you. The key is for you to get in alignment with who you are built to be. One of the things that I'm really good at is tapping people back into the innocence of their childhood. A little kid goes into a toy store believing the parents can buy about anything. You, your mother may say, if you're a little girl, get the Barbie. You're like, but how about the dream house? We can't afford the dream house, but how about the Barbie bicycle? <laughs> because when you're diff better and more magical as a child, you want to Manifest different, better, more magical. Extraordinary, unusual, uncommon. Life interruptions hit. So what do I do, Tim's story? Watch me go there with you. When you have these setbacks in life, the first step to get back to a magical place is you have to become awake. Just write down, how do I get back to a magical place? And write down, number one, awake. And I want you to say the word really strong. Say, awake. awake. 
Awake as you study is to be conscious. Have you ever been driving somewhere and you show up and then you wonder how you got there? Have you ever been in a relationship and you wake up next to somebody and you wonder how they got there? Come on, people. It's like, it's like, yeah, you started dating me seven years ago. But it was kind of like while you were asleep. Come on, this is good stuff. So the first step to the magical place, to come back to the magical place, is you have to become awake. Say it again. Say awake. Say it stronger. Say awake. Because I think a lot of you have been in a place before where you were sleepwalking through life. Please lift your hands if that's true. I've been there before. So you, you, you have to become awake. And one way people become awake is usually through tragedy. That's not the best way, but it's one way. Tragedy of somebody dying or tragedy of an illness in your life or tragedy of something that you created that did not work. And, and so because of this, you had to become awake. You had to become conscious. And a lot of people that I life coach, that's what happens. They come to me in a setback position and they're in a tragedy and they, they need to wake up. The second thing you need to do to get back to a magical place is you have to take inventory. Say, so take inventory. When my father died when I was a kid, even I as a 10-year-old had to take inventory. And here's what the inventory was. Okay, my brother's gone for some reason all the time. He's four years older. My three sisters are always gone. And now it's down to me and my mother who is grieving. So the inventory did not look so good because the house that used to be alive with my father being in the house now felt like a cold garage. I want you to hear me. It's hard to function from a cold garage. It's hard to think magical thoughts from a cold garage. My house felt like a cold garage. Does anybody feel me? So... First of all, to get back to a magical place, you have to become awake. Secondly, you have to take inventory. The inventory is a part that really is difficult for people to go to. When I'm life coaching people, they do not want to go to the inventory of what it feels like now that illness has hit, now that a separation has hit, now that a challenge has hit. But you have to take realistic inventory because you have to realize, just because you're here right now doesn't mean you're going to stay there. So you may be in a painful place, but you have decided not to sit, settle, or cement yourself in that setback. How many of you have decided that in the midst of your pain, you will not sit in that pain for too long, you will not settle in that pain, and you will not cement yourself in that pain? We refuse. So you take inventory, and the inventory, look at me, is not usually going to look like Instagram. Instagram is like, oh my God, love and life. Oh my goodness, I'm at it again. It's interesting, right? Inventory is going to look like I can't sleep. I'm working through stuff. I feel like a discount version of myself. But when I'm working with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, I want them to feel the pain. I want them to, to feel the pain because I'm going to tell you something about me. I am pushed by pain. I am, I am pushed by pain. My, 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 my brother-in-law, who likes to be a little judgmental, he said to me one day, he goes, it must be easy being Tim's story. Oh, my God, everything's given to you. It must be easy being you. And finally, I let him have it. I said, no, actually, I'm just running from the shit. I'm running from the pain that I felt my entire childhood. Is that okay with you if I run from the shit? Most people that do big things, they're either running to something or from something. If you were to get honest with yourself, a lot of your success came because you ran from something. I like to feel a little bit of pain because it reminds me of the crap I came from. Every single day in my life, seven days a week, I listen to Motown music. I did it today already. 
Because when I listen to Motown, it reminds me of Compton, California, how we had seven people in that little two-bedroom apartment. It triggers me. It triggers me to a good place. It triggers me. Look at you, Tim. You're in Estonia. You're speaking for Mind Valley. Look at you, little Timmy from Compton. Keep getting up one more time. Clap your hands. You guys are awesome. Come on, clap like you got big energy. You have to become, you have to become awake. Somebody say awake. awake. Secondly, watch. You got to take inventory. How many would, would, would agree? Sometimes it's hard to like face the facts. Look, you got to take inventory. The third thing you do, and I beg you to hear me today. I know when I'm on my game, I'm so on, I'm so dialed in today. The third thing you got to do is you got to partner with the right people. See, you could be the right person with the right plan, but have the wrong partners and you're going to mess the whole plan up. Dorothy wanted to go to Kansas. Remember this? Who remembers the Wizard of Oz? They said to her, follow the Yellow Road. What? Follow the yellow brick road, huh? Follow, 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 follow the yellow brick road. Easy enough. But even her best partners gave her trouble. Watch. Tin Man decides to get rusty. Come on. Scarecrow catches on fire. <laughs> Cowardly Lion has like a, a breakdown. Toto, trusty Toto, can't even find her. Where's Toto? So Dorothy's trying to get to Kansas. She needs to follow the Yellow Book Road, go on the straight line, but everything's trying to take her off. It's amazing how many people in your life, while you were trying to follow the Yellow Book Road towards your magical life, somehow, some way, started taking you off to Yellow Book Road. Could be a relationship. Oh my God, you're from Alabama? I'm from Alabama. How awesome. <laughs> Took you off the road. Look at me. Dude, oh my God, didn't know you were into that. You're into crypto, so am I. I'm into NFTs too. Dude, we should totally hang out, like all the time. Took you off the Yellow Brook Road. So you could be the right person with the right plan and have the wrong partners. But how about this? What if you're the right person, like we're teaching here at Mind Valley, and you have the right plan, like we're teaching here in Mind Valley, and then you have the right partners, like we're teaching here in Mind Valley. How many of you want the right partners to take you to the right place? Go ahead and clap your hands like you're ready to have the right partners. So this is, I, I life coach a lot of famous rappers that you know. I will not tell you their names. But as soon as they walk in with their posse, I could just look and like, he'll probably have to go. He'll probably need to leave. <laughs> this guy is the problem. <laughs> you can see it. It's not always just the subject. It's who's around the people. There's three levels of partnerships. There's the acquaintance. <sighs> the acquaintance. Let's find something in common. Isn't the weather great? Even in the rain, I had so much fun at the party. Come on, this is acquaintance. Yeah, I'm loving the sessions. Loving what's going on. Can't wait. We're supposed to leave after week two. I'm going to stay till week 19. That's the acquaintance. Say the acquaintance. The second level is the intimate. Ooh, it's getting about to get good. The intimate. The intimate is our families. The, the family. We didn't, we didn't even ask for them. We didn't even vote them in. There they are. Come on, people. It's your sister. She's in the same room as you. Your brother. It's the intimate. It's the intimate. The, in the intimate, you're, you're, you're telling things. They're, they're learning things. That's why so many people that were in your intimate place, whew, you got to make sure they can handle who you are. If they can't handle who you are now, can they handle where you're going? Because I told you, your life's about to get even better. 
Next year is going to be amazing. The year after is going to be even more amazing. Then the next year after is going to be even more amazing. Clap your hands like you're going to amazing, to amazing, to magical, to mad. You, you got, you got, you got to hang around people that can handle your growth. So you have the acquaintance, watch. Then you have the what? The intimate. But then you have what I call the green room. Oh, it's about to get real good. I'm teaching you how to get your magic back and keep it. So let's say if Vision, myself, and Oprah are speaking at a conference. And the person will walk and say, Vision, here's your green room. You're allowed to bring whoever you like. We got you the treats that you like. Tim Story, there's your green room. You can bring who you like. We brought you the treats you like. Oprah, there's your green room. You can bring who you like. There's your treats. Okay, so in the green room, pay attention. You can bring who you want. But you better be careful who you bring in that green room because they're going to be there before you speak. Because oh. the green room is a place of trust. The green room is a place of secrets. Uh, the green room is a place of strength. The question is, who is in your green room? I don't bring the wrong people into my green room. Because what if I'm about to speak to 34,000 people and I got somebody in my ear? Hey, Tim, you got to pitch this division. Oh, my God. Do I have an idea for him? This would be so awesome. This will change him. This will change all of mine. Do I need to hear that when I'm about to speak to over 30,000 people? I'm looking for somebody who just stays there with me like they're supporting me, like they really care. Clap your hands like you need somebody correct in the green room. Come on. See, I think that some of you have been to the right events in life, that life has put you in the right places, but sometimes you got the wrong partners in your life. You got the wrong people in your green room. The U.S. Navy spends millions of dollars every year taking barnacles off the bottom of your, the, the, the ships. Because if the barnacles are there, when it's going, it'll, it'll make the ship lag. I wonder how many barnacles you got <laughs> sucking your life down. In your green room. You invited them. You, you could have left them at level two. But you put them in the green room. Barnacles will suck the ship down. There used to be this song. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. If I can get these fools off my legs. Come on. <laughs> you could believe you could fly all day long. But if you got... Barnacles sucking your life out. That's a weird thing about your growth. Is that people that you thought would be in level one that could go to level two and that can be in level three don't always know how to cooperate in level three. You need people that will celebrate you. You need people that understand the journey. You need people that can say, you know what? Man, I'm so proud of you. Even if their dream has not manifested the same, they just got your back. So number one, you have to become awake. Number two, you got to take inventory. Number three, you got to partner with the right people. You got to have the right plan, be the right person. But you have to have the right partners. I believe that life is going to start giving you the right partners. And some of it can start this week. Clap your hands like it's a good possibility. It could start this week. Come on. That's why I'm glad, Vision, that we're going to Paris, you're going to Los Angeles, you're going to all these different cities, because why? We're partnering with people, we're partnering with power. It takes the right partners to get you to the right places. So good. You become awake, you take inventory, partner with the right people. Watch how powerful this is. But then you need the right principles. You need more than belief. You need the right principles. The last two weeks here at Mind Valley, we've been teaching and learning a lot of principles. Say yes if that's true. 
When my sixth grade teacher, Mr. Probert, said to me, Timmy's story, I think you are what? Brilliant. Brilliant. He started to bring the brilliance out of me. When I went to the seventh grade, he'd call my house to make sure I was doing my homework. To the eighth grade, he made sure I was doing my homework. He never knew that someday I'd get a doctorate degree. He never knew that little Timmy's story from Compton would continue and continue to continue. But he was teaching me principles that would someday change my life. When you get principles inside of you that are strong, you're hard to beat. You're hard to beat because principles give you a revelation. Say revelation. Okay, watch how deep this is. A revelation is an understanding. Like all of a sudden you start to study on the mind, you get a revelation that my mindset is mind to set. It's a revelation. Some of you this week here at Mind Valley, look at me. You're going to get a revelation. You're going to get a revelation. And a revelation leads, secondly, to conviction. Conviction is when it drops from the mind into the spirit. When you know that 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 you know. And when you know that you know that you know, you're pretty much unstoppable. Some of you kind of just think you know. Michael Jordan Knew that he knew that he knew that he knew. Michael Jordan was like, uh, you got two defenders on me? Why don't you put three? And then I'm going to stick my tongue out and go around you and dunk. I know I'm Michael Jordan because I've seen my own commercials. Say revelation. Conviction. How many of you want to get to the point in your life that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know? that you are supposed to live a magical life. Clap your hands in this place. Say revelation. Conviction. Look at me. Malcolm Gladwell, 10,000 hours. Revelation, revelation, conviction, conviction. Conviction, 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 conviction. People always laugh at me because before I'm about to speak, I'm laughing, playing with kids, talking. I was at a conference recently and the guy came up and he goes, are you okay, are you okay? Last time I saw you, you were so dynamic on stage. Are you gonna be dynamic today? I never take a stage wondering, I hope I come off okay. I'm really going to try to do my best. <laughs> For this talk alone, I've put in 45 hours of study. So therefore, it's coming out of my pores. I'm not trying up here. I'm doing. A revelation brings conviction. Conviction brings action. That's where you're headed this year. You are stepping into amazing, magical action in every area of your life. Clap your hands like you're about to step into. Come on. Say it strong. Say revelation. revelation. Conviction. conviction. Say action. action. So. I'm at Kanye West's house, and they bring him these ideas from Adidas for tennis shoes. And he says like this, true story. And I know we're taping this, so Kanye, you'll love this story. They bring him some, some shoes. We're at his house. And he says, you know, I like these shoes, but I kind of see my shoe almost like a spaceship. It's going to be called the Yeezy. They bring him something that does not look like that. And he starts drawing out the Yeezy, people. And later I said, where'd you get that? He goes, it's always been in my mind. I wonder what's been in your mind that you're going to get such a revelation and it's going to bring such conviction that no opposition, no situation, no pandemic, no family problem will stop you because your revelation must bring manifestation you should clap like you're about to manifest something brilliant.
Man, I love this crowd. <laughs> Somebody say, awake. awake. Inventory. Inventory. Partner with the right people. Get the right principles. See, I never try to get people to get the right plan without the right principles, because then you're going to mess everything up. Because your plan may be based on, like, social media. A lot of my friends have airplanes, okay? So I went and spoke for one guy, and he had an airplane. Then a week later, I went and spoke for another guy. He had an airplane. And they just kept talking to me. And I know they didn't mean it this way, but they were like, dude, seriously, why don't you have an airplane? I said, I think I'm good. Seriously, at least, whoa, Tim, you're kind of like throwing me off. I thought you had like a growth mindset. True story. So I get on Google. I start Googling airplanes. I'm not joking. I'm like, I don't want to be left out. I don't want to be left out. Look at me. I don't want to be left out of the group, the high flyers. See, just because that was their plan doesn't mean it was my plan. Right? Because to get an airplane, you got to do all kinds of stuff. You got to pay for it and everything. <laughs> then I'm on, a, I'm on a really big boat. This is very apropos because it just happened three weeks ago in Marina Del Rey. And the guy says to me, Tim Story, you're huge, dude. You're huge. You don't have your own boat? <laughs> I'm starting to feel smaller, <laughs> smaller. Because <laughs> he's saying it in front of like 13 people. Look at me. Seriously. Yo, man. As much as you're out there helping people, you got to get your own boat. I can't even believe you don't have it. just kept going and going and going. But that's his way of looking at it. See, you got you to gotta own your own principles. Know your own principles before you make your own plan. Don't create the plan off somebody else's plan. Don't get a, don't get a plane because everybody else got a plane. Don't get a boat because everybody else got a boat. What's your plan for your life? Say principles. Louder. Plan. Ooh. Arnold Schwarzenegger comes to James Kahn's uh, relative, Sheila Khan, who was his manager at the time. And he says to her, I have a plan. I will be one of the world's greatest <laughs> action heroes when he first came to Hollywood. And Sheila Khan told me, we were like, okay. We kind of doubt it. Comes in to the big meeting and he starts, he puts down his action steps, his plan to like the seven people in the room. And she said, when we read it, she goes, Tim, it was weird. Like we all started to buy into it. Like this guy was really serious. I'm here to tell you, this year is like a setup year for some of you. Next year is going to be magical. The year after is going to be more magical. The year after is going to be even more magical. Clap your hands like you have a plan. Come on. Come on. And we're going to help get you there. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? I said we're going to help get you there. So you have the principles, say principles. Then you have the plan, say plan. And, and then and here's, here's going to be the, the challenge. Then you're going to have the problems. You had to throw that in, Mr. Motivational Guy. Write down problems. A problem in the dictionary means a problem. That was funny. How many would admit in the last six months you've had at least one problem? Lift your hands. If you don't lift your hands, you are not alive. Or you don't get out much. Say this, say, there's going to be problems. Stronger. That's 
Where we lose most people. Thanks for saying that, even though I didn't say to. <laughs> I love him. People look at me. I go, my gosh, I came to Mind Valley. I thought everything would just be amazing. It actually rained at the event. <laughs> I had to wait in line when I went to the hotel. I couldn't even believe it. I was in line at least 14 minutes. I'm not used to that. It bothers me, and I'm off. My aura's off, everything's off. <laughs> Most people do not know how to get through the problems. So good. Listen to me. Oh my gosh, you're so good at seeing it, believing it, miracle mentality, believing it, believing in miracles, believing in magic. But let the problem hit. Then most people stop. Let me give you a deep illustration. When I was a senior in high school, they had this thing called the prom. Who's ever heard of this before? There was a foreign exchange student from Finland. Her name was Nina. And Nina didn't know the rules, so she invited me to the prom. The guy's supposed to invite. But Nina was pretty, so I said yes. Come on, people. That week, I got something that had never happened to me in my life. I had a giant acne cyst on my nose. Look at me. Big. Huge. It was this big. I prayed to any God that was up there. Come on, dear God that's up there. It's Nina. She could have invited Mark, the football guy. Greg, the, the good-looking basketball guy. She invited me, the cute guy that's a good dancer. Look at me. It was like that. No matter where I went, it went with me. Look. You think I'm joking? I was a waiter at a restaurant. It was there. Even my manager at the restaurant, Jimmy's, goes, whoa, Timmy, story. What's, going, what's wrong? I, I don't know. Something happened. Look at me. It's a problem. But sometimes you got to show up to the prom anyway, even with the big acne cyst in your, on your nose. But I see most people, when the problem hits, that's when they hide. When the, when the problem hits, that's when they hide. But I'm going to break you down into something beautiful right now. Did you know that we're all going through recovery and discovery at the same time? Recovery is pain from your past and pain in your present. Tim, you seem so animated and you seem like you're really excited. Yeah, but I got pain. What's your pain? I'm not going to tell you right now, but I got pain. You got pain from your past? Yeah, I got pain from my past. I got pain from my past. I got pain in my present. But I just don't live in my pain of the past and pain of the present because I believe that we can go through recovery, which is mending, healing, restoring. How many believe that even in Mind Valley, even by the courses that we take, we can get healed, we can get better, we can become more magical? Clap your hands if you're hearing what I'm saying. Come on. Just because, just because you're going through a problem doesn't mean, look at me, you can't participate. Come on, Timmy Story, show up to the prom with your big acne cyst. Sometimes you got to show up, even if you're in pain. So good. Say recovery. How many of you would admit you're in recovery in at least one area of your life right now, whether it be physically, mentally, some kind of challenge? We're in the recovery. We're in the recovery zone. We're in the mending. We're in the restoring. We're in the challenge. We're, in, we're, we're trying to get to the problem, but we're, we're, in the, we're, we're in the recovery. But at the same time as the recovery, don't forget the second part, which is the discovery. I find from coaching people all these years, best minds in the world, most people don't know how to do both at once. Either they're all in the recovery 
are all in the discovery. But I'm here to tell you right now, life is recovery and discovery at the same time. If you can learn to master your recovery while mastering your discovery at the same time, you will be unstoppable. In fact, while you pay attention to your discovery, many times you are getting healed in the recovery zone just by being around other people's energy. Aren't you glad you came to Estonia, to Mind Valley, to get in a discovery zone, to cheer, to shout, to celebrate, even though life is not perfect? Clap your hands if you're catching this. Come on, clap loud. Say problems. Someone said to me yesterday, they said, how did you get this job where you get to help these powerful people? I said, I'm a master at untying a knot. Has anybody been tying their shoe before, like a tennis shoe, and got a knot? Lift your hands. Okay. Some people, when they get a knot, they get so frustrated, they just cut it off. Oh, my God. Don't like that relationship? Look at me. Don't like this job, it's got knots. I am not good, I'm a master at untying knots. Give me the most jacked up person, come on. A guy will say to me, my son for some reason likes you, he's pretty much a loser, he's already 12. <laughs> but I'm gonna bring him to you, and like in like in 14 minutes, I'm untying that kid's knots. I got him laughing. Ah! I'm a master at untying knots. I think some of you are so close to something magical. If you would just learn the art of untying the knot. Wow, this is so powerful, right? No. I want it untied now. I will cut it and buy new shoelaces. I will cut her. I will cut him. I will cut them. I will cut my country. I will cut the universe. <laughs> the people who do amazing like a Richard Branson, they're masters at untying knots. The brilliant people like yourself who do amazing things, they are masters at untying knots. When you begin to become a master at getting through problems, you cannot be beat because you say in your recovery zone, stay there, I'm dealing with you. I'm untying some knots, but tonight I'm going to a party over there with Mind Valley. It's going to last till 3 a.m., and I'm going to celebrate and do exciting things because I know that life is not just recovery, but it's also discovery. Somebody clap your hands like you want to live. So you got a problem, almost done. But then you gotta be persistent, persistent. Oh my God, now he wants me to be persistent. What else does he have? What else has a P in it? What else has a P? He's gonna keep saying P's. You gotta be persistent. I tried already. Look at me, I tried. <laughs> Who's ever been a kid? Lift your hands if you've ever been a kid. <laughs> I tried. Go do that. I tried. Ride your bike again. I tried. You got to be persistent. I have a friend. His name is Rick Ross. He's got a song. Every day I'm, every day I'm hustling. Every, every, every. Every day I'm hustling. Hey. That's me. Every day, every day, every day. Every day, uh, every day I'm, <laughs> I'm persistent, yo. Every day I'm, every day. Some people are like, eh, I try, eh, eh. No, every day I'm, every day I'm, <laughs> every day I'm hustling. Because when you're persistent, 
Persistence does break resistance. Persistence breaks resistance. Persistence breaks resistance. Do you know one reason you're doing as well as you are? Because you damn did not give up. Could you imagine how much better you're about to do after this talk? Clap your hands like persistence breaks. Look, every day, every day I'm, every day I'm what? I don't wake up and just wait for life to do something to me. Like, okay, life, here I am. I'm in Estonia. Give me the feelings you have today. No, I, I wake up like, hey, what, 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 what? On purpose, I put on Motown. Bam! Come on. I was in my room, fishing, just walking around. Every day I'm, every day I'm, Every day I'm, see, because if you don't do something with life, life will do something with you. It will push you around. So to be persistent, I call it the law of the harvest. You got to plow the ground every day. For all you farmers, you know this. You got to plow the ground. You got to plow the ground. You got to plow. You got to plow. You got to plow. You got to plow. You got to work your project. You got to work your idea. You got to work your book. You got to work your business. You got to work, you got to work through things. You got to plow the ground. Say plow. Then you have to plant the right seed. It's very important to plant the right seed to get the right harvest. Who says yes to that? You're not going to have a great harvest by planting negative seed. Look at me. Who's ever known someone like this? They're just negative looking. And they just go like this with bad seed everywhere. Eh, 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 eh. Oh my God, hope great things happen. Bad seed, bad harvest. Unless some amazing grace hits you. But usually bad seed, bad harvest. You gotta you gotta plow the ground, then you gotta plant the right seed, you gotta plant the right seed, you gotta you gotta plant, 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 you gotta plant every day, every every day, every 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 day, every day I'm hustling. You came to Mind Valley, you're planting the right seed into the right soil, and watch how the harvest hits your life. Clap your hands like you're catching this. Come on, people. You got to, you got to, <laughs> this is so good. You got to plow, you got to plow, you got to plow. Even when you don't feel like it. I don't just plow when I feel like it. Whew. I used to be a dishwasher. And we had a guy named Mickey. He was like, look, he was right there. He was like. Eight feet back, look, look at me, I'm acting, I'm an actor. There was a Mickey, he was, he was a cook. He was like this. We used to cook steaks, it was a steak place. And if he didn't like the steak, he'd go like this, throw it. One day I said, yo, Mickey, yo, 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 that's Mr. Anderson's steaks. He's like, he's got a lot of money. I go, no, 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 that's Mr. Anderson's steaks, pay attention to it. Hey, he's got a lot of money, not me. I was over here doing dishes. Every day I'm hustling. 16 years of age, every day I'm hustling. So Mickey used to mess with me. He used to say, hey, Timmy, you do dishes like you're the owner. You ain't teasing. Because I'm going to own something someday. Every day I'm, every day I'm, come on, come on. Every day I'm, here's Mickey. Here's lazy Mickey, look. Okay. Are you lazy Mickey? Are you doing the dishes like like you own the place. You gotta plow, say plow. Plant, say plant. Water, say water. Water's repetition. I study my diction at least three times a week. I read out loud three times a week. So that when I speak, my words stick in the air. Bam, diction, bam, bam. Study vocabulary words at least five days a week so I can see the synonym, the antonym, what's going here, here, here. Why? Because I expected someday I would speak to brilliant minds like yourself. Every day I'm... Every day I'm... <laughs> being persistent. Being persistent. 
I plow, I plow, I plow, I plant, I plant, I plant, I water, I water, I water, I water, repetition, repetition, repetition. Right when you think it's not working, it is. I said, right when you think it's not working, it is. Clap your hands like right when you thought it wasn't working, it is. Clap your hands like it is. Come on. Whether it's the owner of this or the leader of this, everybody had a problem that they had to be persistent. Plow, say plow. Plant. Water. Watch this. Say harvest. Oh, payday is on its way. Smile real big, even if you just got two teeth, just go. Like, like, just... God, look. Payday is on its way. Some of you, your life is about to get so good, it's going to throw you off. You're just going to be walking through life. You're going to be like, what? Come on, people. You're going to walk like this, like you're from Compton. Come on, people. What? So for some weird reason, Quincy Jones got it in his mind after me being friends with him for 15 years, this was about 10 years ago, that he was going to bug Oprah. Oprah, when you watch this, watch I get the story exactly right. Quincy keeps calling Oprah over and over. You got to get Tim's story. He's a man. You got to get Tim's story. He's a voice of inspiration for this world. You got to get Tim's story. Oprah finally told me. I was like, what? Whatever. So the first time I meet Oprah, go to, his, go to her house, watch. And we're just chilling, talking, overlooking the Pacific Ocean, talking about the harvest. Remember, I was a dishwasher. And she says, Tim, just love where you're coming from, man. Just love where you're coming from. You've been doing humanitarian work all, this, all these years and helping people. This is a true story, watch. She goes, I don't know why, but I feel like opening up all these new doors for you. And it was like someone went, oh. And I went like this. The Oprah dust. Look. Now, take this whatever way you, you want. This is my story. I don't think we need people. You were doing well enough on your own. Okay, whatever. This is my story. Let me, let me tell my story. She says, I feel like I'm supposed to, strong word, supposed to, open up my world to you. And then she did. All these doors start opening. Oprah said, Oprah said to call. Oprah said to email. Oprah said, little Timmy, the dishwasher. How many believe that one minute you could be just plowing, planting, watering, and then all of a sudden the harvest can hit your life in such a magical way that it's almost hard to describe it? Stand up and clap if you believe that's a possibility. Come on, everybody, stand up and clap like you believe it. Keep on clapping, Mind Valley. Man, I love this group. I love this group.
Keep clapping. Don't you feel it for yourself? Every day I'm hustling. <laughs> you may be seated. Okay, we're going to do something that I call, what did you learn? I do this all over the world. What did you learn? We're all leaders here. So from the beginning of my talk to the end that I just had, I want to know what some of you learned or what triggered you in a good way. Not a Q&A time. Vish and I will do that in a few minutes. But what did you learn? Somebody lift your hand. What did you learn? Hopefully you got really touched by some of these thoughts and principles. Way in the back. Hi, Tim. My name is Sabina. Hi there. And what I learned is not to give up. And I think I really needed to hear that today. And I also learned that sometimes life can be really hard. Yeah. But you can do your best in that moment. And sometimes, you know, magic can just open up. Doors can open up. So never give up. I love that. And just if you say standing, life will knock the shout out of you. I agree. <laughs> and, and that's why we need each other. Like, I got people in my life that would literally die for me. And I need it. Like, two guys from the U.S., Text me today, just beautiful things. Like, we got your back. How many of you besides me need real partners, like people who really care, not just when you're high, but when you're in the middle? Okay, wonderful. Okay, somebody else, what did you learn? Okay, somebody. Hi, Tim, my name is Joy, and I learned that we can have discovery and recovery at the same time. And definitely with the resistance, um, the persistence breaks resistance, knowing yeah. that regardless of what we're going through, if we just keep persisting, that's gonna happen. So thank you so much. Are you finding that in your own life that that's actually happening? Absolutely, yes sir. So I'm not just a bunch of fancy words then? No. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. So you understand that I've been through shit, right? Yes, sir, so have I. Okay. Yeah. And I try, to, I try to bring it down in a funnel so people can get it, get hooks, hook it, hook the shit out of it. But life is painful sometimes, right? Yes. But life is so magical, too. Absolutely. How, how much did you get changed from this talk? It's just, again, the light and knowing that the magic is coming and I can look forward to that magic. The magic is there. The magic is th always there. Mm -hmm. But you learn to get more strengthened by the magic the more you realize that it's there. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Thank you. Who's next? <clears throat> Hello. Hi. Um, I'm Adora. And what I learned is that the people around you don't have to be in the green room. I learned that you can have different levels and that maybe I don't have to kick out my family, but no. put them in their second level and not let them in the room. And uh, that protecting that space is important to ensure that I show up on stage with my best energy yeah, and my best Yeah, I, I love what you said, because you're beautiful to people at stage one, the acquaintance. You're beautiful to people at stage two. But, but stage three, man, that's, that's the magic. That's what you, that's what you put the 10,000 hours in for. And if, if you got a pitch meeting at Paramount Pictures and you got an amazing movie that you created, don't put the wrong person in the pitch room. Beautiful. Thank you. Over here. Um, I feel like I got reminded that harvest is coming and uh, it's gonna be big. And that I. Say that again. It's gonna be what? It's gonna be fucking big. Okay, good. <laughs> now look at me in the eyes. Don't be afraid 
to voice that to yourself. It's going to be massive. And say it to those of us in the green room. Don't say it to people in the second position or the first position because they can't handle that. No, no, it's okay? too big. So I say it this way. Sometimes you got to stay quiet even when you feel a shout. Yeah. But in this group, say what you just said. It's going to be massive. It's Clap good. your hands like his is going to be massive. And I, what you said, I feel like it's, it can be overwhelming, like the change from before to after, and I feel like I've got to hold my ground because it can, it's going to be a storm. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Did for you like time. my talk today? Oh, no. I fucking I loved it. It was like, <laughs> finally, thank you. A talk. Yeah. But I'm coming at you, though. I'm coming at you on purpose. Okay, somebody else. Okay, Would you yeah, learn? Here, over here. Left side. I'm Nina, by the way, not from Finland, though. <laughs> Hi, Nina. <laughs> um, what, what I really loved were when you were saying, like, when you were doing the dishes, you were doing the dishes like you would own the place. Yes. Like, it tells to me, like, whatever you do, like, do it. You don't only do dedication to the big stuff. You do whatever you do. You do with your whole heart. And you do it, like, the best you can. And you do not wait around for your day to get good. You actually make your day be good. Thank you for I that. I like that. Thank Give you. Nina a big clap. That was good. Good going, Nina. Hi. Um, I usually don't get emotional, but I really got emotional with the story that you shared coming from Compton because I have the same history born and brought up in slums of small town in Gujarat, India. Um, what really hit me was the story of, you know, not being okay and not settling for okay. And that is a realization I had about four years ago. And I said, man, I was so mediocre for 35 years of my life. My dad was a truck driver. Everything I did was just to survive and get secure life. And I started my journey to inspire others to not to be okay with an okay life, come out of mediocrity. And the thing which really again hit me is the conviction that you shared with me, that what goes from your mind to your spirit yes. becomes conviction. I have a goal, a mission to transform one billion lives. If I can change one billion people through my story, um, you know, uh, that really, really connected with me. So I love you. this. Can we clap for him? Awesome. Mind Valley University. Hi. Um, well, I can still feel it, but I really learned how to applaud and clap for myself, uh, which is, well, I'm from Holland, and people told me, like, are you going to Man Mind Valley? And isn't it really American, you know, like clapping and everything? But I, um, yeah. I really needed to learn that. And the other thing I would love to share is that you brought me back to my childhood. Yes. And I was always this kid who just loved being in her own world. And I, I went to my, I, I lived in the attic. And um, I always went to my window and I knew, <laughs> I believed in the Care Bears. You know, the bears with the, <laughs> shiny um, rainbows and I knew that if I would like go to my window and like watch that and I did watch the clouds all the time and that I knew that the clouds would form <laughs> a shape of uh, a tulip and while I was listening to you I was like here and I'm like I'm seeing a tulip and I was like uh, it was just so it was great that you brought me to my childhood, and then I applauded myself, so it's I my love first it, day. And, and we love you, thank and you. thank you for coming <laughs> to Mind Valley, Estonia. Give her a big clap. <laughs> and stay, stay in that innocence, even though you got to play with us as adults. Stay in that innocence, my friend. Oh, thank you so much. That was awesome. And what I really loved was persistence trumps resistance because I have so much inner resistance and sometimes 
you know, it's just so easy to take the easy route and not just every day I'm hustling. So that really resonated. And what I loved was that you spent 45 freaking hours preparing for this. Yeah, because it's, it's Mind Valley. That, is, <laughs> uh, that blows my mind. So thank you so much. Give him a clap. I like him. Hi, I'm Tots. Um, I just wanted to say uh, words are really powerful, really, really powerful, and they can be used for good, for bad, or indifference. Uh, when you said the word, when I watched the intro, and you said the word brilliant, I imagined that somebody told me that. And what somebody told, when they told you those words, and I felt it, and I felt the difference that it would have, and it could have made. Yes. And it is making now just to hear those words and that they were told to you because your healing helped me heal or not even heal, but believe. Just believe, and it's taken me a long time to believe that I'm brilliant. I like you, and let me say something about your voice. Your voice is, is amazing. If you're not doing voiceovers already, you can do that. You're, you're so good with your voice. Give her Thank a big you. clap, she's Thank awesome. You. Hola, um, I just wanted to say, Tim, hello, here, hola. Hola. This is the very first time I speak here, because I'm very shy. <laughs> but this was very inspiring. Um, when I was little, I was a little bit nerdy. <laughs> but I had a dream, which was one day I started crying. I said, I'm going to release the world of suffering. Like that. I needed to do that. And then, not a long time ago, I went to South America. I could volunteer in, uh, in prisons, and that changed my life. So I decided that I wanted to help people that was never helped because they were born in suffering. Yes. We rejected them as society, and once they're in prison, we reject them even more. So it's never about rehabilitation because you cannot rehabilitate something that was never habilitated. And I started writing a book for them for free. And the book was called Break Free. <laughs> and it was like a coaching book for those prisons that don't have any rehabilitation program. I stopped doing that because I felt a bit overwhelmed. I've been going as a volunteer to some prisons but I was like, where will I get the money to print those books? I, I'm not allowed to bring them a PDF or whatever. They don't have computers. <laughs> but um, when you said in the beginning that every time you go to a country, you go and see those children, that they will populate the prisons later, you really inspire me to keep on going. So thank you. How well did she do in her speaking? <laughs> oh, no. I'm trying. Huh. That was very good. Very good. Uh, hi, Tim. Hi, Tim. Thanks so much. It was good such a powerful you. talk. Uh, what I learned was is that uh, we have to remember uh, when we were kids going on those trips to the, can uh, to the toy store. Yeah. And we had all those things that we wanted. And we have to forget all the times we went to the toy store with our parents. And they said, well, you know, can't, can't afford that this year. Belt, we got to tighten our belt. We got to stop tightening our belt. We got to reach for the stars. We got to uh, shoot for the fences. So thanks for uh, pushing us forward on that. I feel like Mind Valley is this giant toy store, and we're gonna we're gonna all go for the gusto and go for the prize this year. So thank you. Clap your hands for him. Excellent. And thanks for uh, coming to Mind Valley. Where did you come from? No, but thanks for making the pilgrimage and just watch what happens to your life this week. Because once you get a revelation, you just become unstoppable. Okay, somebody Hi, else. Tim. Hi, Tim, here. 
uh, before I say what I learned, I just want to say that I feel like hugging you really. Like, even though you're there on stage, I felt like you were right here close to me, you know, give me this speech, like, Carolina, you gotta do this and that. You felt that close to me, so thank you very much for that. Uh, my two biggest takeaways, so the first one would be that uh, even though you're in pain or uh, going through a problem or a hard time in life, you just gotta show up, as you said. So that brought me back the memories I had when I was living in China. I lived there for six years. I did my bachelor degree there and I studied in Chinese even though I went there without speaking, even, I didn't even know how. So it was very hard and you know, many times I just wanted to give up and go back to Peru, my hometown. But then I just you know, kept going and then I was able even to graduate as one of the top students there. So it's like, damn, you know, the harvest is coming and I can yes. feel the harvest already in my life for everything I'm doing. And I'm just so happy and also very hopeful to see what is coming in the future as well. And another thing that I really, it really resonated with me was that you don't gotta wait for life to happen to you, you know? You just have to make life happen actually with everything you do, like step by step, you know, everything you do. So thank you very much, Tim. I'm just very inspired and yeah, I love you. And thank, thank you. you for your kind words to me. Thank Can you. Can you give her a big clap? <laughs> thank you. I like her. So we have 12 more minutes, and then in a moment, Vision's going to come. But I want to also just say this. Um, Jeff Perlman just kept being in my ear about Mind Valley for a while. And when I began to study you guys on the space of what you guys are doing, I honestly believe that this is the greatest movement that we have of this kind. Somebody clap your hands like that's real. And uh, Vision, thank you for allowing me to be part of the Mind Valley family, and I love your mother, just so you know that. She's awesome. All right. 12 more minutes, who's next? Hi, uh, thank you for reminding me I am brilliant, and uh, especially remind me that we all have the power to release the genie in other people, like your teacher did in you. We all have this power and we can use it every day with the waiter, with our kids, with our, anyone around us. So we can rob and help other people release the genie. Yeah, so you, so you are brilliant. So everybody say to him, say, you are brilliant. Thank you. Thank Clap you. your hands like he's brilliant. Thank you. You're brilliant. Hi, I'm Leslie, and the things I took from this afternoon, Tim, one was, it's not too late. No, it's not. Just keep persisting. And yes, work like you do own that organization, you do own your dream, and you can still break through. You, and you probably gather I'm a wee bit older than some of the people in the room, but it's still not too late. It doesn't matter I'm not 26 and look like I'm going to be Miss World, I can still do it. Clap Thank your you. hands for her. And can you just stay standing? There's times and seasons for everything. And I feel like you've just been warming up for what's about to happen. And what will take place in the next three years will just blow you away. And now you have laid the foundation to handle the bigness that's about to hit your life. Clap your hands like bigness is coming. I just life coached her. Hi, Tim. What you said about um, the discount version of oneself, I realized that I've been living that discount person for several years. And uh, this week I kind of knocked back a little bit and I was ready to run home and resume my life as the discount me. So hearing that really struck home, and uh, I think I'm going to stick it out, persevere, and wait for that greatness. I like that. And do me a favor, talk to me while I'm here. I'm here all week, and I'm not one of the speakers at some conferences, not at Mind Valley, that just does his thing and then moves on. So let's dialogue about this. And I want you to say to him, just say, you are brilliant. Say it to him. You are brilliant. And clap for him like he's brilliant.
Come on, let's pull brilliance out of each other this week. Yeah. Hello. Um, I'm really nervous, but standing up here and sharing my thoughts um, is part of me, my new identity, and that's why I decided I'm going to do this. <laughs> So what did I learn? Actually, I didn't learn anything. I, I experienced something. Like this was a full experience. Um, I really, really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for letting me, allowing me to connect to my pain. Um, because it's my pain which I used to transform it into my potential, into my uh, purpose and into my power and peace. And at the moment, I'm at the stage where my purpose was revealed to me, which is the biggest gift I've ever received in my life. Beautiful. And now I'm about to bring my purpose to life. And I know my intuition guided me to come to this event, to connect with uh, great souls and energy so I can bring this purpose to life. And I just want to thank you that you allowed me to connect with my purpose her pain because it automatically leads me to my purpose and that automatically leads to me feeling gratitude so I thank you I mean how much. brilliant is this so stay standing okay just allow me 60 seconds to just coach you okay when we're in pain we go singular we go singular okay if something terrible happened to us we tend to go singular when we're happy we go plural little kids are like wanting to play with each other, plural, plural. We're in pain, we go singular. Don't go singular on me. Even in your pain, go plural. Look for somebody else who's in more pain than you. You guys, somebody's hurting worse than you, trust me. Because if we all go singular because of our pain, then who's gonna help the person that needs our plural? So I'm so proud of you and thanks for sharing. Give her another big clap. Thank you. Hi team, on your left. Five minutes, you guys are doing awesome. What a room, wow. Hi, my name is Dariana. And the fun part of being here is that every day I'm getting to listen to exactly what I needed. And today you reminded me that we can all do different, better, and more magical. Yeah. And it gave a new push to my purpose. So, yeah, my learning is that we are all raw diamonds. Are you but... glad you came here this week? Sorry? Are you glad you came to yeah, this Yeah, yeah, I'm event? here for the three weeks and it was a process. I love okay. it. Give her a big clap. Thank you. Okay. I think we have time for three more. Uh, hi, um, Radwan from Paris. Uh, thank you, team, for this uh, great uh, talk. So one of the things uh, I learned is uh, the sequence uh, between uh, its revelation, conviction, and action. Action, yeah. And um, so uh, I have many ideas for many years, and one of my challenges is to take action. So I would like you uh, to give me more... Um, input on how to get more uh, conviction and revelation. Oh, revelation and conviction. Yeah, I'll be around here, just come and talk to me. Okay. So stand in line behind him. <laughs> Give him a clap. <laughs> Thank you. I love you. Thank you so much. That was awesome. I love Mind Valley and I'm obsessed with vision over there. I love vision. And this is my lovely husband here. <laughs> um, what, what this talk did for me was belief. We've shared our corporate lives and we followed our passion project a few years ago and it's been a roller coaster ride, really hairy, scary. And I loved how you said, plow through it. You've got to keep plowing through it. And the image of you without your undies trying to, <laughs> that sticks with me. You go, the waves are coming. You just keep going and you going and you go and the harvest will come. So it's given me belief. It's given me 
coherence with my soul's purpose. I know why I'm alive. Purpose. I feel alive. And I'm, I'm 50. I'm here to celebrate my 50th birthday. And thank you. <laughs> and I'm loving life. I'm so turned on for life. And I had a real low the last month. It's been like, what the hell are we doing this for? What's wrong with us? <laughs> Take the easy life. We should have retired. But you've given me belief. And I'm coherent to myself first. And I'm going to freaking do it. And I'm waiting for the big harvest and it's going to come. Clap your hands Thank like you. it's going to work. Okay. <laughs> Stay standing. Um, and she's probably a friend of our family, but Elizabeth Gilbert is my friend. Eat, pray, love. And she said to me, she goes, Tim, did I ever think that Julia Roberts was going to play me in a movie? <laughs> so that's what I say to you. The, the magic that can hit can be at such a mind-blowing place. So thank you for being persistent. Clap for her again. You never know. Okay. Hi, Tim. I'm Shito. I live in USA. Thank you so much for preparing 45 hours to come talk to us today. To hear that is very humbling. And uh, you also said pilgrimage. You congratulated all of us on making this pilgrimage yes. to Mine Valley. So when I, um, when I came from Michigan to Florida and then to Norway and Sweden and then Estonia, and then afterwards I brought five kids, four teenagers and one 10-year-old, and their flights got stopped and a couple of them were first time traveling internationally, all minors. So for me, when you said that word pilgrimage, it really resonated with me. And the fact that you did your pilgrimage of uh, preparing, even though you're such an amazing speaker already, it really connected me. And I really wanted to thank you for acknowledging that and for sharing your, um, your journey. Thank you for making the pilgrimage. <laughs> Give her a big clap. Okay, we have time for one more. And then if my host can start making your way towards, so you could tell us what is next. First of all, thank you so much for everything you have shared here. It really, um, I, I have it in my heart. Because for the first time, I could see my own story from the outside. I could really celebrate myself. Um, to make it very short, I went through abuse, trauma, domestic violence, all these things. Single mom, I got to the United States, baby, no money, no no language, nothing. I got uh, cum laude at college. I never gave up. I always showed up every single day. And now I have an amazing family. I adopted my husband's kids. He adopted my daughter. We are made of love. We, are ha we have a mission to make this world better. And I celebrate myself f for the first time in such a genuine way. Thank you so much. Can you clap for her? That's awesome. Keep clapping for her. I love her. Who's coming up next? You want me to go? Thank you all for allowing me to share. And I think we're going to do a Q and A in just a minute. Could you tell them what they're going to do? Yes, I think they can thank you now from the bottom of their hearts for what you did here. I think it's very important. Give it up for Tim! Woo! 